Hello and welcome to Rough Reads. I'm Conrad Cecil and with a group of actors from Folsom, California, friends of the Sutter Street Theatre, we are reading the play The Naked King by Evgeny Schwartz. Inspired by the fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen, The Naked King brings us into a world where a young swineherd pursues the heart of a princess who is betrothed to a terrible tyrant. That tyrant holds onto power by manipulating his people's fear and silliness. An allegory, perhaps. A shout out to the actors, Alison and James Gilbreath, Shane Burrows, Ren Elsa, Evelyn Leclerc, Kyle Kane, Leova Margarian, and joining us from the UK, Hannah Elsie. And it's the first in a series of rough reads, actors coming together to bring a play to life online. If you're enjoying what we're doing, like and subscribe. The Naked King by Yevgeny Schwartz. Act One, a flowery meadow. In the background, the royal castle. Pigs are wandering about the meadow. Henrik, the swineherd, is talking. His friend Christian, the weaver, is lying stretched out on the grass, looking pensive. Well, there I was, crossing the royal courtyard with a piglet in my arms. The piglet was squealing something awful. And all of a sudden, I hear a voice from above. Stop tormenting the poor animal, you brute. I was just about to swear, because you understand, I wasn't enjoying the pig squealing either. But I happened to look up and, oh, I saw the princess. So charming and so pretty that my heart turned over inside and I resolved then and there to marry her. Oh, my dear pigs, you've gone to sleep too. Of course, I've been boring you with this all day, every day. I can't help it, I'm in love. Oh, she's coming. Good day, swineherd. Oh, good day, princess. You're taller than you look when I saw you from above, from my window. Yes, I am taller. And your voice is gentler. You used to shout so when you were standing below in the courtyard. I'm not shouting here. You shouted so loudly that all the palace knows I've come here to listen to your kettle. Well, how are you, swineherd? She gives him her hand. How are you, princess? He takes her hand. Your Highness, we've come here to listen to the musical kettle. If we're not going to listen to the kettle, but to what a strange man has to say, and what's more, listen to him with such improper attention, then I shall immediately... Well, you're not obligated to listen to a strange man. You can stand aside. But he's a stranger to you as well. What nonsense. I never talk to strangers. Princess, I give you my word that I shall immediately call the king. Leave me alone. Oh, how they bore me. Well, show them the kettle, Henrik, if they must have it. Christian, come here. Bring out the kettle. Seize your opportunity. Kiss her the, so that she has something to remember when she gets home. Uh, here, here, your highness. Uh, here, noble ladies, is the remarkable kettle with little bells. Who's made it? We have. And what for? So that we could amuse the highborn princess and her noble ladies. The kettle is very plain to look at, just smooth copper, the ass's hide stretched over it, little bells around the edge, but this plain appearance is deceptive. Inside this copper body is, a hidden, is, is the hidden, the most musical soul in the world. This copper musician can play 150 different dances, and it can sing one song while it jingles its silver bells. Why so many dances, you may ask? Well, it's because it's as gay as we are. And why only one song? because it's as faithful as we are. But this is not all. This miraculous, gay, faithful instrument conceals a nose under its ass's skin. What? Yes, a nose. And what a nose, I must tell you, beautiful princess and noble ladies, that this coarse's ass's hide contains or conceals the finest, the most sensitive nose in the world. It's enough to turn it in the direction of any kitchen in any house and our remarkable nose would smell out, whatever the distance, the kind of meal being prepared there. And at once it would describe it quite clearly, 
though perhaps with a slightly nasal accent. Well, my noble audience, what shall we start with? With the song, the dances, or the dinners? Start with dinners if you like. Start with dinner. Dinner. Start with dinner. 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 Noble ladies, uh, I obey. We put the kettle down on its left side and that brings the nose into action. Can you hear it breathing? Sounds of heavy breathing are heard. It's it's the nose s sniffing around. Uh, it sneezed, so it's about to speak. I, I'm in the Duchess kitchen. Oh, 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 how interesting. There's nothing fresh cooking in the Duchess oven. There are only things being warmed up. <laughs> Why so tell us? Tell us. Uh, I got the king's table. She filled her sleeve with food. Nine sandwiches with caviar, 12 with salami, five veal cutlets, a whole rabbit, shashlik, a chicken with white sauce, 18 pies with various fillings, <laughs> some sauce tartar with capers and olives, Filet of beef gadar, uh, ice cream with crystallized fruit, coffee ices, and a small crust of bread. You're lying, impudent no. Why should I lie? I am an instrument of precision. <gasps> bravo, bravo. This kettle, your royal highness, has one dreadful property. <gasps> what is it? Despite possessing a musical soul, doesn't do anything for nothing. What must I do? Tell me, I'm ready to do it. You must, you must kiss me ten times. Oh. 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 You can kiss me 82 times. I'm a princess after all. This is dreadful. The king leaps out of the bushes. This is the king father. He's wearing a crown and an ermine cloak. Imagine. What a dreadful thing, my daughter kissing a swineherd. Why are you doing it? Just felt like it. Felt like kissing? Yes. Very well. Tomorrow I'll marry you off to the king, our neighbour. Never! And who's asking you? I'll pluck his beard out for him. He's clean shaven. I'll tear all the hair off his head. He's got a bald head. Then I'll knock out all of his teeth. He has no teeth. I mean, he is artificial teeth. And so you want to marry me off to a toothless ruin of a man? It's the man you're going to live with, not his teeth. Oh, you women. As for you, swineherd, I'll send you and your friend into exile beyond the boundaries of my kingdom. Goodbye, king. Where are you off to? I'm going to the king, your neighbor. He's so stupid that I'll have no trouble outwitting him. There's no man more daring than me. I've kissed your daughter, and I'm not afraid of anything from now on. Goodbye. I'll write abroad for a governess, as savage as a dog, and I'll send her along with the princess. And I'll send my chamberlain along with her as well. Curtain. In front of the curtain appears the Minister of Tender Feelings. I am His Majesty's Minister of Tender Feelings. I have a terrible lot of work to do just now. My king is about to marry a princess from the neighboring kingdom. Well, I've come here, therefore, with the purpose of finding out the whole truth about the princess, her origin, and her behavior. And I swear by my knightly honor that I will find out everything there is to know about her royal highness. One small pea and 12 bottles of choice wine are going to help me in this. I am a very clever man. The mayor of the village, accompanied by young men and girls, rushes around the courtyard, shouts of, she's coming, she's coming, and to the princess, the chamberlain, and the governess. Your Highness, the emotion, the emotion your arrival arouses in this modest little village is nothing in comparison with the turmoil it stirs up in the heart of the sovereign who's in love with you, nevertheless. Take your ends of your pockets out. Improper it is so to endure. You don't speak foreign languages. No. From the day His Majesty the King had declared our nation to be the greatest in the world, we've been ordered to forget completely all foreign languages. Uh, this lady is a foreign governess, the fiercest in the whole world. 
She's been bringing up naughty children all her life, and it's made her very callous. Now, she now pounces on everyone and tries to educate them. Stop you scratching yourself, not to. <laughs> you see? As she passes the minister box at him. Must breathe no through. Bad boy, are you? Ani banatri kundri. Goes with the chamberlain. Extremely suspicious. Why did the king father send such fierce people to accompany the princess? There must be a reason. But I'll find out everything. Everything! Twelve bottles of strong wine will force these fierce guardians to spill the beans. Everything! How clever I am! How agile, how resourceful, how shrewd! In less than two hours, I shall have all the princesses past laid out before me on the palm of my hand. <laughs> The princess's bedroom, the princess wearing a night bonnet, bonnet is lying on top of 24 feather beds. As something seems to stick right into my body through all these 24 feather beds and just won't let me go to sleep. I expect a feather got mixed up with the down or perhaps a twig worked itself between the planks of the bedstead and the mattress. I'm sure I'm covered in bruises by now. Oh. What an unfortunate princess I am. Well, I'll try to sing myself to sleep again. With my heart aflame, I roam the world free. I love Henrietta and she loves me. What's this? Am I dreaming already? And who was singing just now? It was the man who swore to marry you, your highness, come what may. He fell in love with you because you are so sweet, so kind, so tender. Henrik! Oh, but I'm not dressed! Never mind, princess. Uh, you'll soon be his wife, you know. It isn't because I think it indecent. I just don't know whether I look pretty like this. Henrietta, you're so charming that I'd sooner die than leave you. Don't worry, we're following you all the time. Take this piece of paper. Did you write this? Oh, go to hell. What? Shut your big mouth, you windbag. What does that mean, Henrik? If our escape doesn't come off, you must learn this and repeat it to your fiance, the king. You don't know uh, how to swear properly, so you'd better learn this. Then you could swear at him to your heart's content. Listen, my dear friends, you won't be cross if I ask you something. No, of course not. Go on, ask us. I'll do anything for you. Well then, even though it's going to delay us a lot, be kind. Kiss me. The courtyard of the inn is lit up. The Minister of Tender Feelings, the Governors and the Chamberlain are sitting round the table. They are all drunk. The Minister more than anybody. I'm so smart, Chamberlain. Do you hear? I'm so clever. The king ordered me to find out. Told me find out quietly. <laughs> Has the princess had any adventures? You understand? -la -la -la. Find out delicately, he told me any other man would have made a mess of it, wouldn't he? But I've had an idea. I hit upon the idea of making you drunk so that you'd spill the deans. Beans, the beans, what clever, wasn't it? Hello. <laughs> well then, come on, tell me. You won't succeed in hiding things from me. Never. You've got to still spill the D, the P, beans. What can you tell me about the princess? We chased her with the howls. Why? She's got such a fine tail. Hello. <laughs> a tail? Has she got a tail then? <laughs> a, 
horse. Yikes. But why? It's a tail? Because it's her nature. Hello? You mean the whole family and her father. Has he got a tail? <laughs> Certainly. Her father has a tail too. So you've got a king with a tail. If one lady no could this goggle muggle, how should mutually how she mutually kisses with the swan her? <laughs> Take your elbows from the table. Huff! Blink <laughs> your eyes stop. Yes, hello. We didn't head are you? What are you saying? Hello? The swine! Friends, comrades, don't behave like that. I'll bash you up. <laughs> mayor, mayor, bring more wine. This stupid idiot going to sleep. Oh, happy men. Look, he don't lies in sleeps. And I sleep not, sleep not several nights. Everybody jumps up except the minister. The governor seizes the princess and carries her upstairs. The chamberlain whistles, lets out hunting cries. Soldiers run in. Henrik and Christian fight their way through to the exit. Everyone runs after them. Act two, a reception hall separated by a velvet curtain from the bedroom of the king. Enter Henrik and Christian dressed as weavers. They're wearing gray wigs and gray beards. They look around them, then bow to the head valet. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Bellringer. Mr. Bellringer. So you want to serve very well. I'll report on you direct to the prime minister and he'll report to the king. For weavers, we have an extra speedy reception. His majesty is getting married. He needs weavers very badly. For that reason, he'll receive you very quickly indeed. Good morning, Prime Minister. Good morning, Your Majesty. Well, old man, what do you have to tell me? Huh? Oh, clever, clever Majesty. Come here, come here, you trust, truthful old man. Let me kiss you. <laughs> and don't you ever be afraid of telling me the truth straight to my face. I'm not like other kings. I, I love the truth, even when it happens to be unpleasant. Good morning, you little rascal, my little rascals. Good morning, your majesty. And whom did you see in your dreams last night, my sweet? You, your majesty. Me, hey girl. Glad to serve your majesty. And, and you girls, what did you dream about? About you, your majesty. <laughs> Brave girls. Glad to serve your majesty. Fine. First lady in waiting, you've succeeded in militarizing the girls very well. They answer me very smartly today. I, I greatly acknowledge my satisfaction. What's your grade? A colonel, your majesty. Uh, I make you a general. I humbly thank your majesty. Well, you deserve it. You, you've been leading beauty for 30 years now. Every night you see me, only me, in your dreams. You're my little bird, General. <laughs> yeah. Glad to serve your majesty. My little sweeties, don't go too far from me, my darlings. The professor is going to be as dry as rust. I, I'll need refreshing. Well, of course, of that. Come spit it out. Your Majesty, with the assistant of Professor Brockhaus and lecturer Efron, I have compiled an absolutely exact pedigree of our highborn visitor. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. <laughs> First of all, about her coat of arms. Her coat of arms, Your Majesty, is a symbolic representation. Yes a symbolic representation which is passed from generation to generation and designed 
in accordance with certain rules. Yes, rules. Yes, I, I know what a coat of arms is, Professor. From immemorial times, certain symbolic designs, yes, designs, came into use and were cut onto signet rings. Two, two. Uh, they were also painted on weapons, banners, and other things. Yes, other things. Uh, chuck, chuck, uh, uh, my little birds. These designs represented the results. Yeah, enough, enough about the uh, designs. Uh, come to the point. Coo -coo, coo -coo. Uh, yes, they represented the outcome of a wish to separate oneself from the general mass of people, yes, to separate oneself, uh, to give one's, oneself a sharp distinction, which would be noticeable even in the heat of battle, yes, of battle. All right, all right, all right, I, I, I don't like it, but let it be so, all the same. Uh, tell me about her uh, pedigree, but uh, be briefer. I obey, uh, your majesty. Uh, when Adam, Dreadful. Is the princess a Jewish then? Huh? No, how your majesty, how can you? Uh, well, but Adam was a Jew, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, this point is still under discussion, your majesty. I have information to show that he was a Karim. Oh, I should think so. I must be sure that the princess is of pure blood. Uh, this is very fashionable just now, and I uh, stick to fashion. I'm a man. A fashion, and, and am I not my little birds? Huh? Yeah. You certainly are, Your Majesty. You certainly are, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, <laughs> you've always kept in step with the most modern ideas of the day. Your Majesty, yes, most. Uh, absolutely. Uh, take the cost of my trouser alone, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Continue, uh, Professor. So, Adam. Uh, leave the delicate subject and pass on to more recent times. Uh, the Pharaoh Ishmetik. Uh, let's leave him alone. A, a very ugly name. Uh, then, Your oh. Majesty, permit me to pass on directly to the princess's own dynasty. The founder of the dynasty was George I, named great for his exploits. Yes, great. That, that's fine, yeah. He was succeeded by his son, George II, whose exploits earned him the name of Ordinary. Yes, Ordinary. Um, I'm in a great hurry. Just to enumerate her and sisters, I understand without explanation why they earned their various names. If you don't hurry, I'm going to cut your throat. <laughs> I obey, Your Majesty. Uh, further, we have Wilhelm I, the gay, uh, Henrik I, the short, George III, the dissolute, uh, George IV, the pretty, Henrik II, the devil may care. Oh, why, why was he called that? Uh, for his exploits, Your Majesty. Uh, then came Philip I, the, abomin the abnormal, George V, the funny, George VI, the negative, George VII, the barefoot, George VIII, the anemic, <laughs> George IX, the brutal, George X, the spindle leg, George XI, the brave, George XII, the uh, uh, antipathetic, George XIII, the impudent, George the 16th, the interesting, and finally, uh, the present reigning monarch, the princess's father, George the 15th, named for 14th, 15th, and uh, named for his exploits, the bearded. Yes, the bearded. Uh, and, very rich. Uh, and very rich and very collection of ancestors, I'm sure. Mm. Uh, yes, your majesty, uh, the princess has 18 ancestors, uh, not counting the coats of arms on her mother's side. Yes, she has. It is, it, it's quite sufficient. Uh, you can go. Who else is waiting for an audience? Eh? Speak out, my truthful man. Oh, you, you, your Majesty, I, I won't conceal from you that two weavers are still waiting for an audience. Have you got references? We've worked a whole year for the Turkish Sultan. He was quite indescribably pleased with our work. That's why we, he didn't write anything to recommend us. The Turkish Sultan? I fancy that. The great mogul of India thanked me personally. Fancy that, a great mogul. Don't you know that our great, our nation is the greatest in the world? All the other nations are mere rubbish. Only ourselves are <laughs> fine fellows. Haven't you heard that? Hmm? <clears throat> I must add that our fabric possesses one truly marvelous property. 
No, just imagine. What? What is that? I've already mentioned it, Your Majesty. Only clever people would be able to see it. Our cloth is invisible to people who are unfit for their jobs or who are complete and utter fools. What a remarkable cloth it must be. Uh, you mean you'll enable me to see who of my staff is not fit for his job? Exactly so, Your Majesty. And I'll grasp it at once, who is clever and who is stupid. It won't take you a moment, Your Majesty. And this stuff is of silk? Pure silk, Your Majesty. Stay here. I'll talk to you again after the princess reception. And I quickly bring the Minister of Tender Feelings in. Be quick, I tell you. And to the Minister of Tender Feelings. Have you good news? I see by your face the news is good. Good morning, Minister of Tender Feelings. Good morning, Your Majesty. Well, well, dear man, I'm listening. Your Majesty, alas, the princess is absolutely without reproach as far as her morals are concerned. <laughs> but why, alas? The purity of her blood, alas! Your Majesty, the princess failed to feel the pee through 24 feather beds. More than that, since that night she slept on one feather bed only through the rest of her journey. Why are you grinning then, you ass? <laughs> it seems there'll be no wedding, and I was so much in the mood for it. What a letdown. What a disgusting trick. Come here. I'll cut your throat for this. Your Majesty, I felt I had no right to conceal this unpleasant truth from you. I'll tell you unpleasant truth right away. Oh, ah, I won't do it again. Spare me. Get out. Get out, all of you. You have set me. You've offended me. I'll stab all of you to death. Bury you alive in my dungeon. Sterilize you. Get out. Everything is so foreign here. The ground all covered with stones. Not a blade of brass. The, wall, the walls are watching me as a wolf watches a lamb. I'd feel very afraid if I hadn't received a note from my charming, curly-haired, kind, affectionate, handsome Henrik, my own dear Henrik. We are here. I am wearing white hair and a white beard. Swear at the king. Tell him that he's abominably dressed. Henrik, I don't understand it at all. But oh, how clever he is. I wonder where he is. If only I could see him for a second. Enter the Prime Minister and stand stock still as if struck by the Princess Beauty. It's he, with white hair and white beard. Allow me to tell you, Your Highness, to, to tell you in my crude old man's paternal way, I'm quite overcome by your beauty. Uh, well? Yes, Your Highness? Why don't you tell me to pull you by the beard? What are we for, Your Highness? <laughs> oh, you! You won't take me out this time! I've recognised you at once! Oh, God! Now I know how to pull! <laughs> Princess, why do you bite the right him? Uh, I want him to go to hell or some such place. Take those drops, Basidas. I smashed the bottle and you can go to hell yourself, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she's stark mad! Oh, this is wonderful! It'll be perfectly easy to get rid of her. I must go and report to the king. No, I better not. He doesn't like unpleasant reports. Girls! Ladies in waiting, enter in military formation. Permit me, Princess, to introduce the ladies in waiting to you. They're, they're very glad to meet you. So am I. Very glad. I feel so lonely here, and now I see they are, most of them, as young as I. Are you really glad to see me? Allow me to report to you, Your Highness. Uh, what? Your Highness, during my hours of duty, nothing special occurred. Four ladies in waiting are here, four are not attending on Your Highness. One is on duty in the neighbourhood, another on point duty. Two are having fits of hysterics on account of the impending marriage. Are you a soldier, lady-in-waiting? No, your highness, I'm a general. 
please enter the palace, princess. Girls, listen to my command. Steady, ready, march. They go but, in. But this is dreadful. And it is. Recover! Well, where is she? How annoying. What a bore. I want my lunch as soon as possible. And I, I've got to um, waste time on that hybrid girl. Where is she? Uh, we must get rid of her quickly. Oh, this is coming, Your Majesty. Mm -hmm. Enter the princess with ladies in waiting. At the sight of the beautiful young princess, jump with joy! From the moment the princess appears, the king, <laughs> the king begins to behave in an enigmatic way. His face reflects complete bewilderment. He speaks in a hollow voice like a hypnotized person. He gazes at the princess with his head lowered like a bull's. The princess mounts the dace. Calm down! How are you, princess? Go to hell! Look struck dumb with the ten tip. Princess, I'm happy to see you ascend my throne like the rising sun. The light of your beauty illuminates everything. Shut up, you stupid windbag! I'm happy, princess, that you appreciate my true worth. Silly ass! You understand me so well, princess, that all I can say is that you're as intelligent as you are beautiful. You're an idiot. I feel we love one another, princess. Will you allow me to kiss you? Get out, you son of a bitch! Call the weaver! Hey, your majesty! Uh, make me a wedding suit immediately. But didn't you hear your majesty how she broke the discipline? Uh, no, I didn't hear. I only saw... I'm up to my ears in love. She's wonderful. I'll marry her. Marry her at once. How dare you look so surprised, huh? Don't, I don't care a damn about her origin. I'll change all the laws. She's so pretty. No, write this down. I grant her here and now the most noble, most pure-blooded origin. I'll marry her even if the whole world is against me. A corridor in the palace. A door leading into the weaver's room. The princess stands, pressing herself against the wall. She's looking very sad. Loud drum beats are heard from outside. It's very hard to live in a foreign land. Here, everything is mili uh, what's the word? militarized. Everything's done to the beating of drums. The trees in the garden are lined up like a detachment of soldiers. The birds fly in battalions and in addition to that, they have these dreadful traditions made sacred by centuries of use. You can't breathe for them. At dinner, they serve first chops, then orange jelly, then soup. This has been an established practice from the ninth century. Flowers in the garden are dusted with white powder. Cat's fur is shaved off, leaving only whiskers and a tuft on the end of the tail. And none of this can be changed, or else the state will go to ruin. I could be very patient if Henrik were with me, but Henrik has disappeared, vanished without a trace. How can I find him when the ladies in waiting follow me about everywhere in close formation? Only when they're led away to be drilled can I come alive. It was very difficult to track down all the bearded men and pull their beards. So often when I caught one in the passage and pulled hard, nothing happened. The beard held firm as if stitched on. The man screamed for help. It was no joke. I've heard the new weavers have beards. The ladies in waiting are outside in the town square, marching, preparing for the wedding parade. The weavers are working in this room. Shall I go in and pull their beards? Oh, I'm so scared. What if Hemrick is not there either? What if he had been caught and has had his head chopped off in the public square to the beating of the drums in accordance with the 8th century traditions? No, I, I really feel, I feel, 
I'll have to cut the king's throat, however disgusting I might find it. I'll go to the weavers. I'll put on my gloves. My hands have gone rough with all this beard pulling. She takes a step towards the door when the ladies in waiting enter the corridor in military formation. I'm going to need to report, Your Highness. Turn about! The ladies in waiting turn about. March! Ladies in waiting march out. Princess takes a step towards the door. Ladies in waiting return. The wedding dress. Turn about! March! Ladies in waiting take several strides, then return. Is ready, Your Highness. Turn about! March! Ladies in waiting turn around and march. They meet the king and the prime minister who enter. Turn! Stand still! Ah, my sweet girls. And oh, she's here too, huh? Looking exactly as I saw her in my dreams, only much more cross. Princess, darling princess, who's in love with you can't help loving you. Go to hell. Her nerves are on edge, I understand her so well. I, too, am on the edge of my tether. I can hardly wait. Never mind. Tomorrow's the wedding. In a moment, I'll see that remarkable cloth. Your Majesty, as Good. usual, is in the right direction. It wait. is here. Yes, just here. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, though. No, the weavers are working. If I may put it so crudely, they're working just here. I know, I know. Uh, yes, that material is very special. Of course, I have nothing to worry about. First of all, I'm intelligent. <clears throat> Secondly, I'm absolutely no good for any place except the royal throne. Even on the throne, I'm never quite satisfied. I'm always getting annoyed with something. In any other occupation, I be simply terrible. And yet, it might be better if someone else first paid a visit to the Weavers. For instance, the Prime Minister. He's an honest, clever old man, but he's certainly less intelligent than I am. If he would see that material, then I'd be sure to see it too. Prime Minister, come here. I'm here, Your Majesty. Yeah, I just remembered that. I must slip around to my treasury to select diamonds for the bride. You go and have a look at that stuff and report to me afterwards. Your Majesty, uh, forgive my rudeness, but... I... No, I won't forgive. Go. Be quick about it. Yes, yes, it doesn't matter. All, all the same. Uh... The king runs out. Minister of Tender Feelings! Enter the Minister of Tender Feelings. Good day! Good day. Listen, uh, I'm expected at my office this moment. Go into the weavers and afterwards report to me uh, how they're getting on. <sighs> this fool finds he can see the stuff. I'm sure to see it in my turn. Prime Minister, I'm supposed to go immediately to the barracks of the ladies-in-waiting and persuade them not to weep at the king's wedding tomorrow. Let's have time for that. Go into the weavers at once. Yes, yes, of course. I, however, court poet... Enter court poet. Go into the weavers and then report to me how they're getting on. If this fool can see that cloth, I'm sure to see it too. But your excellency, I'm engaged in completing the poem on the princess's departure from her country to take the road to our kingdom. What use is that to anybody? The princess arrives here a fortnight ago. Go now, quickly. I'm sure I'm not a fool, but... <sighs> I'll risk it. Come to the worst, I can tell a lie. It wouldn't be the first time. Knocking on the door is heard. Christian seizes the scissors and pretends to be cutting something out as he bends over the table. Henrik draws on the table with a piece of chalk. Uh, come in. Enter court poet. I'm waiting for you to show me the fabric you've got ready made for the king's wedding garments. No, no, I, I, haven't you heard me? Why, why are you staring at me? If I've slipped up over something, tell me, don't try to model me up. My work is nerve-wracking anyway. I, I must be treated with care. But we are so surprised, Mr. Poet. Surprised at what? Tell me at once. Uh, but the cloth is before you. Here it is, on these two frames stretched for drying. And uh, here on the table, there's a, a, a pile of other materials. Look, what, what lovely colors, uh, what fine designs. <coughs> Hmm. Of course. There they are. On the table. What a large pile. But I was telling you to show me the silks, um, to show and explain which would be used for the waistcoat, which for the cloak, the coat, and, and so on. 
Certainly, Mr. Poet. On this frame, you see three kinds of silk. This one with a rose design will be used for the waistcoat. It'll look very pretty. The petals will move like real ones as the king breathes. And, and here, in the middle, the silk with the king's coat of arms. It's for the king's cloak. On this other silk here, we've woven the patterns of forget-me-nots. It's for the king's trousers. The plain white silk on the frame will be used for the king's underclothes and for his stockings. The satin is for the king's shoes. And on the table, there are lengths of silk of all kinds. Ah, but tell me, I'm just curious to know, what name do you give in your common language to this silk here, the one with the rose pattern? Uh, in our common language, we call the ground of this design green. And in your language? A green, also. Quite a cheerful color, isn't it, Mr. Bowie? Oh, yes. <laughs> Very cheerful indeed. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you, Weavers. Uh, you know, there's no other subject of conversation in the whole of the palace other than your wonderful cloth. Um, everyone's quivering with eagerness to make sure that everyone else is the fool. Uh, the Minister of Tender Feelings will be here in a moment. Uh, goodbye, Weavers. Goodbye, goodbye court, poet. court poet. Poet goes out. Well, our affairs are improving, Christian. Knocking on the door, enter the Minister of Tender Feelings. In his hands, he holds the pages from the notes, poet's notebook. With great assurance, he goes up to the first frame. What wonderful roses! Ah! What's the matter? Uh, uh, forgive me, Mr. Minister, but... C can't you see? What is it? I can't see. What the devil have I got to see? You're standing on the silk we've put on the floor to cut the king's waistcoat out for him. Oh, yes. I see, I see. The minister jumps out of the room, pokes his head in through the half-open door. Oh, what excellent work! Unfortunately, we ministers of the crown are obliged by the nature of our duties to hold our heads up. For that reason, I can't properly see anything that's low down or on the floor. But all that is displayed on the frames, the roses, forget-me-nots, coats of arms, all that is most beautifully done. Carry on, weavers, carry on! The prime minister will be here to see you shortly. The Prime Minister opens the door and pokes his head through. Christian, pretending not to notice him, goes behind the empty frames. Hey, Weavers, why don't you tidy up your floor a bit? Such precious cloth, and you let it trail in the dust. Hey, hey, hey the king will be coming to see you presently. Presently. Uh, I obey your excellency. The Prime Minister comes into the room, cautiously stops just inside the door, Christian, on the other side of the frame, takes a bottle from his pocket and drinks. Hey, you! How dare you drink rock at work? What fool is brawling out there? What? Have you gone blind, you ass? It's me, the Prime Minister! Oh, uh, forgive me, Your Excellency. I can't see you from behind this cloth. I didn't recognize your voice, but you saw me. That's what I can't understand. This! No, I, I recognize the smell of the stuff. I, I hate vodka. I can smell the damn stuff a mile off. But this isn't vodka at all. It's uh, the water, Your Excellency. I'm pushing a filthy bottle under my nose. Go back to your room. The king will be here shortly. Goes out, singing <laughs> heard off stage. The king approaches singing. La, 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 la. I'm coming to look at it. I'm coming to look at it. Well, I express my royal gratitude to you. And you don't think, Your Majesty, that the cut of this waistcoat here is too bold? No, not too bold, no. But we've talked enough. Uh, come, let's start trying things on. I still have many things to attend to. Oh, would the Prime Minister be so kind as to hold the King's trousers? Uh, just come out of my office, my friend. <laughs> I've got ink on my hands. Uh, you take them, Baron. I left my spectacles at home, Your Excellency. Perhaps the Marquis here. I'm too excited. My hands are trembling. Perhaps the Count here. In our family, we consider it a bad omen to, to hold the King's trousers. What's all this about? Huh? Come, dress me quickly. I'm in a hurry. I obey, Your Majesty. Uh, Henrik, 
Come here. Your your leg, please, your majesty. Uh, a little to the left, please. Now, 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 now to the right. Uh, I'm afraid your courtiers would have helped you with uh, greater skill. It's a little tight around the shoulders, and, oh. and the cloak's a little bit on the long side, but on a whole, the, the costume suits me well. Your majesty, forgive me for my rudeness. You're very handsome man as it is uh, but in this costume uh, you're twice as handsome really <laughs> well take it off now the weavers thank undressed you. the king and put his own clothes back on him well, thank you weavers you're a fine couple of fellows the curtain comes down for a few moments when it rises again it's in the same room the following morning the noise of the crowd is heard outside the king is being dressed behind a screen the Prime Minister stands facing the audience. Oh, no. Why did I take on the Prime Minister's job? What are they for? As if there weren't plenty of other jobs. Today's affair will end badly. I feel it in my bones. Fools will see the king naked. This is terrible. Really terrible. No, oh, the whole of our national system, all of our traditions are found in on unshakable Stupidity! What will happen if the fools tremble at the sight of their sovereign stop naked? No. I'll go to the sovereign and I'll tell him straight. He mustn't go out. No, he must not. My honest old man. Oh, oh, yeah. here I am. Oh, I don't want it rude. Um, do these underclothes become me? They sheer beauty. I'm, I'm telling you straight. Uh, thank you. Uh, you may go. No. I can't do it. I can't tell them anything. The words that just freeze on my lips. I've lost the habit in my 20 years of service. Shall I tell him? Shall I not tell him? What will happen? What will come of it? Uh, a man with a child on his back. Make way for the child! Make way for the child! He's only six, but he can read and write, and he knows his tables. I promise to show him the king as a reward. Boy, how much is seven times eight? Fifty-six. Yeah, make way for the child. Make way for the my clever son. And how much is six times eight? Forty-eight. You hear, gentlemen? <laughs> it's only six. Make way for the clever child, my clever son. Absent-minded man, Hannah. I left my spectacles at home, so I won't be able to see the king. Damn my short sight. Evelyn, pickpocket. I can easily cure you of your short sight. Really? How? With massage. Here, straight away. Oh, please do. My wife told me to take a good look and then describe everything to her in detail. And here I am without my glasses. Open your mouth, shut your eyes and count loudly up to 20. But where's he gone? Uh, he's run away. I, I can't see any better. Uh, worse, if anything, I can't see my watch, my purse or my wallet. Make way for my boy, make way for my clever son. How much is six times six? Thirty-six. Do you hear? Make way for my son, make way for a child genius. Drum beats heard, the great movement in the crowd. People climb telegraph poles, stand on curbstones, get on one another's shoulders. They go into the palace from the right end to the king father, richly dressed in the princess in wedding apparel. Father, do believe me for once in your life. The bridegroom is an idiot. A king can't be an idiot, my child. Kings are always wise. But he's so fat. Child, a king can't be fat. You ought to say he has presence. I think he's deaf too. When I swear at him, he doesn't hear. He just neighs. A king doesn't neigh. He only smiles graciously. Uh, but do stop bothering me. Why are you looking at me with such pathetic eyes? I can't do anything. Turn away at once. There now. I brought you the musical kettle. The king won't be, won't be with you the whole day after all. When he's not here, you might listen to music, to the little bells ringing. And when there's no one near, you could even listen to the songs the kettle sings. 
princess can't be allowed to marry a swineherd, you know. It's just simply not allowed. He's not a swineherd. He's Henrik. That makes no difference. Don't be silly. Don't be a silly. Don't undermine respect for kingship. If you do, our neighbour kings would smile contemptuously at you. You're a tyrant. I'm nothing of the sort. From the palace come out trumpeters, followed by ladies-in-waiting in military formation, then the courtiers in richly embroidered uniforms. After them comes the prime minister. The king is coming! The king is coming! The king is coming! A, yeah. se a sedan chair is brought in with the king sitting inside. Smiling graciously, he looks out the window. The sedan carriers stop. The crowd shouts, hurrah! The soldiers fall down on their faces. The door of the sedan opens and the king leaps out. He is stark naked. The welcoming <laughs> shouts. Recover! Recover! Turn away! The king. Not even the most sumptuous garments can hide the fierce flame burning in my heart. Papa, you can now see what an idiot he is. Greetings, cousin. <laughs> Greetings, cousin. What are you doing, cousin? Why do you appear like this before the subjects? What's that? So you too? <laughs> What what do you mean, me too? Uh, you two are either a fool or unfit for your job. Anyone who can't see this wonderful suit is either a fool or unfit for the job. Anyone who says he can see this stuff is a fool, you idiot. Who's an idiot? Speak quietly or the mob will hear you. Speak quietly and smile. And you are an idiot. I... Yes, you. Why? Because you've come out into a square full of people with your trousers off. And what's this? <laughs> a leg. A leg? Yes, a leg. No. A bare leg. Now, why are you lying? I give you my word of honor that I'm dressed like a picture. You're naked, stark naked. Now, why are you saying such disgusting things? My courtiers, am I wearing clothes? Wonderful, most colorful clothes. Splendid, really noble looking clothes. So a fig for you. Prime Minister, am I wearing clothes? Forgive me, Blunt, Your Majesty. You're stark naked, you fool. Do you understand? Stark naked. <laughs> Just look at the people. Just look at them. They seem to be thinking. They are thinking. You miserable buffoon. Traditions are about to crumble. The stage is going up in smoke. Papa, look, he's got nothing on. My mother's a locksmith. My father a laundress. Down with the monarchy! He's naked and he's fat. <laughs> Did you hear what the child's saying? He can't be unfit for his job. He's not employed by anybody. Oh, he's clever. He knows he's his got table. a belly like a watermelon, and yet he orders his about. <laughs> Look, he's got a pimple. A pimple. And he dares to have us sterilized. Shut up, all of you. I do all this. On purpose. Yes, I do everything on purpose. And now I'm on decree that everyone should get married with uh, nothing on. We must flee. Look at the eyes of those people behind the barrier. They saw the king naked. Now they're undressing me with their eyes. In a moment, they're going to pounce on me. Boo! Ah, it started. <laughs> Henrietta. Dear friends, you've come to celebrate a wedding, but the bridegroom's run away. But this is still an occasion for celebration. How can it be otherwise? A young girl has been at last reunited with her 
dear beloved Henrik. She has to be married to an old man, but the power of love has overcome all obstacles. We welcome your rancor against these gloomy walls. We greet you, so greet us in return. Greet our love for friendship, laughter, and joy. Darling Henrik, my beloved, curly-haired and very nice. Marching steadily in time will get me home in a trice. Let our land rejoice. We drove the king out. We've made our toys. Let our land rejoice. He who has sound mind will always get ahead. Marching steadily in time, he'll be happy, happy in the end. Let all our land rejoice. We drove the king out. We've made our toys. Let all our land rejoice. Curtain. Dad.